Hello, Sid Roth there. Welcome to my world where it's naturally supernatural. My guest saw healings when he prayed, but when he got hold of this revelation, miracles exploded. Want to know this bombshell that few understand? Next. Sid Roth has spent over 40 years researching the strange world of the supernatural. Join Sid for this edition of It's Supernatural. My guest has been seeing miracles for years, but something has happened and now miracles have exploded. Take a look. What's going on, man? You can run again. You can run? Let's go run. Come on, mama. I can't even hear the walker. I got witnesses. I couldn't hardly walk. So I took a step of faith down here. And I'm standing. That's the joy. That's the joy. And I don't have a walker. And I'm not going back to the wheelchair. And I'm not going to die. And I'm going to live. I've received my knee replacements, both of them. Yeah? Amen. What was going on? I needed knee replacements. Yeah? How you doing? I'm doing good. Well, let's go check it out. Come on, let's go walk. Now, you've just seen Chad Gonzalez today. But when he went to college, something happened to him that happened to many college students. His faith was undermined. And one day, he challenged God. What happened? Yes, yeah, I, I was at a point in my life, I was just questioning if God was even real. I'd heard God was the healer. I heard these good things, but I never saw anything. And so I was at college. It was the first time I wasn't made to go to church. And I'd, I'd been running and just questioning things. And nine months in, this guy invited me to a church service. And so I was sitting in the very back row and I was mad. I didn't want to be there. I'm questioning the reality of God. And the evangelist that was there at the end, he said, if anyone here needs a touch from God, you need, you need healing in your body, come on up here. And I remember at 19 years old, I have my arms folded. I'm <laughs> mad. I'm sitting in the back row. And, and these are the words that came out of my mouth. I said, God, if you're real, God, if you're, I want to see what you've got. I challenged him and I got up and I walked to the front and I stood there in line with the other people and I sat there with my arms folded. I'm watching this evangelist laying hands on the different people. He got to a lady right next to me and when he put his hands on that lady, and I was watching, my eyes open. When he put his hands on that lady, it was like electricity hit my head. I felt it go through my body. It was like my feet caught on fire. I wasn't a runner, a dancer, a shouter. I didn't know what else to do. I took off running and I just fell out under the power of God. And when I came to, it, it shook me for two reasons because number one, I found out God was real. And number two, it just so touched me that God loved me enough to prove to me that He was real. And from, from that moment, it radically changed my life because I was a good church boy. I was in church three times a week. I was a good kid. And yet I looked at that, if I was questioning if God was real, I knew there had to be more people questioning that. And so it set me on this mission of not only encountering God for me, but to help other people experience Him, not just in knowledge and facts, but experientially know that there is a God who loves them and lives on the inside of them and wants to move through them. Well, Chad, uh, he, he had all of these questions answered in a minute. All you need is one minute with God. And he became a healing evangelist and was relatively successful. He saw miracles. But then he grabbed hold of a revelation, which is why I have him as my guest. Tell us about the how you got hold of it and what it is. Well, I'd been reading after people like John Lake, John G. Lake and Smith Wigglesworth. And I saw Smith Wigglesworth, he, he makes some comments about this phrase, the life of God. And I saw John G. Lake, he would talk about the life of God and sometimes he'd refer to it as the lightnings of God. Hmm. And, and I began to look at that and, and then F.F. F. Bosworth, you know, he wrote Christ the Healer and he had a chapter about the life of God. 
And I began to, to think about those things, and I began to study in the book of John, and I, I started noticing throughout the book of John, Jesus was always talking about this life, this Zoe life, the life that God is and He has. And I started discovering that God put this life into Jesus, and Jesus realized He was a possessor of it. And then Jesus said, I came so you could have it too. But the moment we started teaching about the life of God in us, what we found is that people stopped looking at themselves and their faith and their confession and their works and got their eyes back onto Jesus and who He is on the inside of them. And that's when miracles just began to explode. And you explain in your book that Adam actually lost the life of God. Yeah. But what happened? Yeah. So God, that was His original plan. He put this life into Adam. That was His plan for mankind. He put this life into Adam, but when Adam sinned, he, he, he spiritually died. He was separated from God, and He lost that life. And yet the wonderful thing is we see even throughout the Old Covenant, God giving these promises and prophesying through the prophets about this new covenant that was going to take place, and that He was going to come and live on the inside of them and walk in them and dwell in them, and that He was going to put His life and, and His Word on the inside of them. This was the heart cry of God to get this back into mankind. And then we see the plan begin to unfold in John chapter 1, uh, verses 1 through 4. It says, in Him, talking about Jesus, in Him was life, this Zoe life, eternal life, abundant life. In Him was life, and this life, it was the light of men. And then we get down to John chapter 5, uh, verses 21 through 26. And it says that Jesus now, He understood He was a possessor of this life. He said, even as the Father has this life, I have this life. And then He goes, I can give it away to whomever I want, whenever I want. So Jesus understood He was a possessor of it, and He could give it away. Because what, what is yours, you can give it away to whoever you want, whenever you want, and you don't even have to ask permission. And it's why we see Jesus, we never see Jesus ask God to heal anybody. We never see Jesus ask God's permission, can I heal someone? Why? Because God had given him the mission and then he gave him the equipment, that well, life. Well, well, you know, as Chad got a hold of this revelation, the first time, tell me about that. So the first time, I'd been seeing this for a while and I finally got the nerve to, to teach on it. It was at a youth camp in Spokane, Washington. And one of my best friends, Bryant Hill Hill, he was the youth pastor. He invited me to speak. And so we were there, and I was teaching about our union with Christ and, and these wonderful realities. And we'd been going maybe about 30, 40 minutes. And then all of a sudden, miracles just started breaking out in the service. And these are teenagers. There's about 200 teenagers. Miracles just started breaking out. There was a girl that had this skin disease. I mean, I was teaching along, and one of the camp counselors, she raised her hand. She said, Chad, you have to come over here and see this. So I ran over there. It was a summer camp, so this girl, she had a, uh, a short sleeve shirt on, shorts. She had the skin disease that covered her entire body. We literally sat there and watched this, this skin disease start disappearing from her, from her face, going down her arm, going down her legs. Could the, you see this? We watched it physically with our eyes. It wasn't an open vision. Or, I mean, we physically watched it disappearing, going down. I mean, it was this red, splotchy, you know, bumps all over her body. It was almost like someone got an eraser and just started wiping down. Mm. That was happening. There was a young boy that uh, he, was, he was legally blind. He had very thick, like Coke bottle glasses. He was instantly healed. Uh, there was a girl that had a torn uh, rotator cuff and her shoulder lifted, it was hanging down and it lifted up and uh, popped back into socket. She lifted her hand, nobody touched her, she got healed. Just, just miraculous things were happening. And it was teenagers and they didn't know all the churchy things to do. They were just getting healed, just sitting right there. There were short legs that were growing out, ears that were being healed. There was a boy that had a, a torn ACL on his knee. He was instantly healed. He took off running without pain. Without so you got the message. You should give that message. Yeah. <laughs> but the question I have, okay, that worked for a bunch of teenagers. Would it work for people like, uh, he spoke at the Kenneth Hagen camp meeting people that are really into healing, but don't see a whole lot. They knew the but, Scriptures. They know yeah. the Scriptures. What happened when you spoke there? I mean, did you, did you think the same thing would happen? Or Well, that was no. my plan. That was my plan to go in there and, I mean, we're going to experience God. 
And we went in there and same thing. We've been teaching on, on these pieces of union with Christ, been teaching about 40 minutes. And all of a sudden, miracles just start breaking out. One of the, one of the ushers, uh, he had a torn rotator cuff. He was instantly healed. He started lifting his hand. He was healed. Uh, there was a young lady. This was probably one, one of the neatest ones. There was a young woman. And, and this was her word. She said, I'm Catholic. And she said, I was over at Walmart uh, getting groceries and a lady came up and invited me to the service. So I came across the street, came over here. She said, I had been in a bad car accident. I've been in extreme pain for a long time. She said, as you were just teaching, she said, I felt a, a strong heat just come over my body and all of the pain went away. She said, I regained all of my movement and, and nobody touched anybody in any of, these, any of these services. People were just getting healed. And the reason was they become less focused on the problem and just be, started to become aware and conscious of what was on the inside of them, the life of God. Uh, the same have you life. seen this message work with something like deliverance? Yeah. Yeah, there was one woman, uh, this was in Tahlequah, Oklahoma, and uh, we were seeing a, a lot of wonderful miracles taking place. And this one lady, I walked up to her and she was deaf. She was deaf in both ears. She had hearing aids. She could barely hear with them, but without them, she couldn't hear anything. I went to lay hands on her and I just knew on the inside that it was demonic. And so I put my hands on her. We took authority over that, released the life of God in her body. And it was so sweet because she, she starts to talk and she goes, I can hear my voice. I can hear my voice. I can hear my voice. She starts jumping and shouting. And the pastor told me afterwards, he said, Chad, you don't realize the, the back history of this. He said, this woman used to be with David Koresh in the, in the compound in Waco, Texas. She escaped a few days before the FBI raided it. She had been involved in the occult for over 20 years. And she got delivered uh, in the very same way, the life of God being released into that body and setting her ears free. Well, tell me when people say, why did Jesus come and die? The logical answer, which is true, yeah. to go to heaven, but you say way beyond. Way beyond that. You know, John 10.10 10 is a very well-known scripture amongst a lot of us. John 10.10, 10, it says, Jesus is speaking. He said, the thief has come to kill, steal, and destroy, but I have come that you would have life. Jesus didn't say, I came so you could go to heaven. Jesus said, I came so you could have something, so I could, I could make you a possessor of something. And so, thank God there is a heaven to gain, there's a hell to shun. There is a heaven, but it's one of the byproducts of salvation. Jesus didn't come to change our destination. He came to change our position and unite us with God. He didn't come to necessarily take us somewhere. He came to put something on the inside of us, and it was this life to affect us and to affect other people. But a byproduct it is, yeah, we get to go to heaven. But that wasn't the focus. It was about right here, right now. The key word is now. It's great that we're going to have it in heaven, but the whole purpose that we're here is to be a carrier of the life of God in the now. Now, many ministers are questioning their belief in healing because they're not seeing results. No more. Be right back. Our world is rife with comparisons about what separates us. Day after day, we go about our lives with tunnel vision. But Scripture tells us how Messiah broke down the wall between Jew and Gentile, allowing for the creation of one new man, one new humanity. This spiritual completeness is set to usher in the greatest move toward God the world has ever known. Sid Roth has discovered Scripture's key to reaching the Jewish people with God's love. One New Humanity opens the door for God to move in signs and wonders, and all will see the evidence of the invisible God promised in Scripture. At SidRoth.org, you'll find mentoring tools to empower you to share how One New Humanity is critical to bringing multitudes to know God. You'll understand Israel and the Jewish roots of the church and how all the nations of the earth will experience blessings unseen in human history. Log on to SidRoth.org today and learn how one new man is the key to unlocking God's greatest blessings. The supernatural knows no bounds, and now there are no limits to equipping you to receive your supernatural breakthrough anytime, anyplace. 
ISN, the It's Supernatural online network, offers live streaming of programs 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, right on your mobile devices or smart TVs. I love that I can watch my favorite shows anytime I want. My workouts are out of the box, and so are my ISN podcasts. Download the free ISN app today. Uh, Chad, there's some missing ingredients. What are they? There's a disconnect. It's not God. It's not God's Word. But what's the disconnect? The disconnect is this consciousness, this awareness uh, of God. You know, so many of us, we know the Scriptures. We can quote them right and left. We know the Scriptures and we know the things to do and the right actions. But it's this consciousness, this awareness of God and His life on the inside of us. That's what's missing. That's what's missing. And you see that with Jesus, He was always talking about the Father in me, the Father with me. It's the Father on the inside of me that's doing the works. And we've got all of these faith formulas, but God isn't in them. Jesus said in John 15, 5, He said, I am the vine and you are the branches. He said, if I abide in you, and that's the key, if I abide in you and you abide in me, you will produce much fruit. And so many of us are trying to produce that fruit, but we're trying to do it without Him. We're trying to do it based on our works and the ABCs and one, two, threes and pushing the right button and turning the right knob and pulling the right lever. But it's not about those things. It's about maintaining and, and increasing in this consciousness and awareness of God on the inside of us. Tell me about that church in Illinois. Oh my goodness. So we were in this church in Illinois. It was an older congregation. And I was teaching along these lines and we got about 15 minutes into it. And then I just stopped and I could tell it wasn't going anywhere. And I, that's why I said, I said, friends, this isn't going anywhere. Let me prove to you that what I'm talking about is true. And so, again, it was an older congregation, and I knew there were some back issues. So I said, who here has some back issues? And lots of hands went up. So I just chose the first person mm -hmm. closest to me. And she said, yeah, I've got lower back pain. And so as she was getting up in my mic, she said it loud enough. She, and she said, oh, yeah, and by the way, I have a short leg and a club foot. <laughs> Well, on the inside, I'm thinking, I wasn't asking for that. Yeah, so I had to take a moment on the inside, recollect my thoughts, and I started reminding myself of what was on the inside, because this wasn't about me. It's about the Father living and working on the inside of me, His life flowing through. So we brought this lady up, and she took off her shoe, and then I saw this club foot that's all balled up. And I was standing about 10 feet away, and so we just spoke to it. And all of a sudden, this foot, this leg starts growing out. As soon as the leg got there, the foot opened up. And when that opened up and all those people saw that, I had them. And for four hours, I'm not exaggerating, four hours, we saw miracle after miracle after. We had four sets of deaf ears that were healed. We had two men that had curved spines because of scoliosis. It instantly straightened up. Uh, there was a young girl that she was paralyzed on the right side of her face due to a car wreck. And she instantly received all of the movement, all of the feeling came back. Uh, there was an older gentleman that had extreme swelling in his legs, so much so he had wraps on his legs to keep the skin from bursting. Mm. And I laid hands on him, and his pants legs were really tight. All of a sudden, you could start seeing the wrinkles, and you could feel his legs starting to go down. He took off. He was in his mid-70s. He took off to the bathroom, pulled those, those wraps off, came running through the back doors and said, I'm healed, I'm healed, I'm healed. And he actually showed up that night service in shorts, just so he could show his legs off. But it was, they, they had an encounter, they had an experience, and they saw the Word of God in demonstration. That it wasn't just words anymore, it was an experience, it was an encounter, and it opened up their heart, and things became very, very easy. They became conscious and they became aware. Well, that reminds me of uh, that little boy with the growth on his neck, another yes. example of uh, the life of God in action. Yeah, it was a young boy. He had a growth on his neck. Um, the, the parents, they had prayed, and, and they knew the healing scriptures. They knew these things. And so I was there for uh, a couple of healing services. We laid hands on that, released the life of God in, into that neck and into that growth. And I went back there a year later to minister to them again. And they were the first ones to greet me. And they said, Chad, we've got to tell you. And they brought the son to me. It was completely gone. And it was just another wonderful demonstration of the love of God and the life of God just being released uh, into that little boy's body and uh, seeing a wonderful miracle. 
And there are people watching us that say, I don't know if the life of God is inside of me. Now is your moment to experience the life of God, to really know. I want you to repeat this prayer out loud with me right now to the best of your ability. Very important out loud. Repeat after me. Dear God, I'm a sinner. I'm so sorry. I believe Jesus died for my sins. I ask Jesus to come inside of me, release his life throughout every cell of my body right now. I ask Jesus to not just be my Savior, but be my Savior and Lord. Amen. Give us a couple of these PowerPoints that you teach. Yeah, so a couple of points I want you to remember in this. If you grab this, the fact that number one, the life of God, it's in us. It's in us for us. Number two, the life of God, it's in us for others, for us to release it into other people. And the same measure that of this life that was in Jesus, this same measure, it's on the inside of us in the very same way, so we're not lacking. And I just want to encourage you, those of you that are sitting here and you're listening to this, this life that we're talking about, if you've received Jesus as your Lord and Savior, it's literally on the inside of you in the very same way that it's in Jesus right now, seated at the right hand of God. And right now, I guarantee if you'll start checking yourself, you'll start finding out that some of those growths that you are dealing with, tumors, they're dissolving right now. There's somebody that you're sitting there, you're on a bed and you've got a vent, you're on a deathbed. But I'm telling you, the life of God is coming out of my mouth and it's flowing out of your spirit and it's going into your body. And all of a sudden, right now, your lungs are being released and that life is flowing into those organs that were dying. There's life, there's a quickening taking place right now in your body. Why? It's not because of you. It's because of the great big God that lives on the inside of you and his great and mighty power flowing out of him, flowing into you and now flowing through you and causing a miracle in your life. I want you to pray for healing for the, and release the life of God from within you. I know we all have that, that right. have said that prayer, but I want you to release that for healing uh, and, and for whatever God shows you right okay. now. Yeah. So, you know, Paul prayed this prayer for the church. It's Ephesians chapter 1, verse 15 through 21. I pray this for myself, and I'm going to pray this for you right now. Paul's prayer was not for God to give them something. It was for God to open their eyes to what God already gave them. So we're going to pray right now. Father, I pray right now that you would open up their eyes and you would help them to understand the call of God on their life the inheritance that God has in the saints, and that you would help them to understand the exceeding greatness of God's power that's on the inside of them right now, the very same power that literally raised up Jesus from the dead. It's on the inside of their spirit. Father, open up their eyes and help them to understand, and not just understand, but right now, even as we're praying, to experience an explosion of the life of God out of their spirit and into their body, where they were feeling weak, now they're feeling strong. Where they may have been lame, now they're walking. Where there was gross, now they're gone. Where there was unrighteousness in that body, now it's becoming righteous because of the, the very light of God shining into their body and overcoming every ounce of darkness right now. We're declaring you're healed, not because of your works, but because of the ver very works of Jesus Christ that he already did for you and now that he's doing in you simply because we declare it to be so. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Prayer is an essential part to access every one of God's promises and blessings for your life. And praying daily in your God-given prayer language is so important in light of the times we are living. Introducing the brand new Sid Roth God Talk app. With this new prayer app, you will be able to set a reminder for when you want to pray. Let others know the time you spent in prayer each day for accountability. Take advantage of our worldwide prayer app community to lift your prayer requests to God. It includes a video teaching on how to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit and how to effectively pray the supernatural language that God has given you on a daily basis. Watch our TV archives and ISN, our It's Supernatural Network, to build your faith to believe God for the impossible. 
The app is free and available for iPhone, iPad, or Android devices. Just go to your device's app store and search for Sid Roth's God Talk. ISN, the It's Supernatural online network, offers live streaming of programs 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, right on your mobile devices or smart TVs. I love that I can watch my favorite shows anytime I want. My workouts are out of the box, and so are my ISN podcasts. Download the free ISN app today. Your gifts to this ministry will help Sid air It's Supernatural in Israel 28 times a week and distribute his evangelistic book to the Jewish people worldwide. Next week on It's Supernatural. Are you ready to defeat the assignments of hell against your family? That's right. I said your family, your very own household. I'm Brenda Kuhneman. Join me on the next It's Supernatural with Sid Roth and discover the tools you need for supernatural, supernatural blessing and breakthrough for your family.